Hi, I'm Lauren Ward from the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and our work explores vertical deformation dependency on spatially variable elastic plate thicknesses with insights from the 2019 Ridgecrest earthquake sequence. Throughout this study, we utilize a 4D viscoelastic earthquake cycle model that simulates both the elastic and time-dependent viscoelastic response of the body force dislocations embedded in an elastic plate overlying a viscoelastic half space. The model is additionally able to simulate lateral variations in crustal rheology parameters, which we define using the SCEC CTM. Benefiting from both spatially and temporally dense instrumentation, deformation from the Ridgecrest earthquake sequence is poised to become one of the best observed co- and post-seismic processes to date. Co-seismic observations really reveal at least 35 millimeters of vertical uplift at near field stations. In the far field, smaller but still measurable subsidence and uplift motions around 8 to 12 millimeters were also recorded. These large quadrant subsidence and uplift patterns in the vertical direction are due to the release of predominantly horizontal strain. We have found good agreement between vertical co-seismic GNSS displacements provided by T. Herring and our vertical co-seismic displacement model with a mean residual of 0.9 millimeters. We also consider interseismic background rates for the region prior to the Ridgecrest earthquake sequence using an interpolation of minus vertical velocities. A key observation here is that the Ridgecrest vertical velocity field is predominantly in the opposite direction of background deformation prior to the earthquake. Now with over a year since the rupture, we consider the early post-seismic trends from the GNSS solutions. These solutions were computed by removing outliers for each station's time series, performing a linear regression analysis of displacements after July 5th, and then removing the background inner seismic vertical rate. The image on the right was created by interpolating the figure in the center, and this will be compared to models incorporating both variations in a senosphere viscosity and also elastic plate thickness. We found that viscosity of three times 10 to the 17th Pascal seconds provides the best fit for a GNSS solution at the one year epoch for a homogeneous elastic plate thickness model with a median residual of negative 1.02 millimeters per year. However, with only one year of time series data, additional data over the next several months to years will be required to adequately monitor the anticipated evolving transient relaxation behavior of this event. Overall, we found a good fit to the data, but the model predicts a southeast quadrant of subsidence that is not currently being observed by the GNSS data. Additional inspection of these data is required to resolve this anomaly. We also implement variations in elastic plate thickness for Ridgecrest region, assuming that the thickness ranges from 45 to 60 kilometers in the central Mojave region bounded by a much thicker nearby Sierra Nevada plate to the west. These models assume a viscosity of 1 times 10 to the 18th Pascal seconds. The vertical velocity residuals computed as variable minus homogeneous model have a difference of less than one millimeter per year. This small but distinct changes show how a variable elastic plate thickness composition may alter deformation results when reduced deformation rates are expected for thicker plates. In summary, a first order characteristic of the post-seismic vertical velocity field just like the co-seismic vertical displacements, is a far field quadrant pattern of uplifting and subsidence. The magnitude and transient decay of this pattern will vary depending on the function of viscosity and elastic plate thickness. One year post-seismic vertical GNSS velocity is used to assess the sensitivity of the elastic plate thickness and transient viscosity. Vertical velocities are currently consistent with a viscoelastic relaxation model for a viscosity of 3 times 10 to the 17th Pascal seconds, which has predominant subsidence and uplifting quadrants west and north of the Ridgecrest rupture. This behavior is diluted south of the garlic fault and additional work is needed to understand some anomalous sig signals occurring in the eastern and southern portion of the region where compatible subsidence quadrants is, is expected. The variable representation of elastic plate thickness in the homogeneous model deformation residuals are less than one millimeter per year when the viscosity is assigned one times 10 to the 18th Pascal seconds. While these differences are small, they produce an interesting pattern of additional vertical deformation anomalies that may become more evident with additional data. Our next step will be to directly compare the GNSS solutions with the variable elastic plate thickness model for, and further analysis will need to be done to determine the optimal viscosity of the model, like what we had done for the homogeneous model shown previously.